good morning, everyone. Nice to see you today. It's Friday, February 3rd. And if you're watching live, I appreciate you joining in live today. And if you're watching the replay, thank you also. Um, always nice to see people joining in and leaving a comment either way. And as usual with my lives, if you leave a comment while we're live and say hello, where you're from, um, a little something, be part of the conversation, you will be part of um, a raffle that I have for all my, my people who join live. Okay, so hello, Marcia. Glad that you were able to join in. Um, Marcia is one of my downline that she recently joined. She took advantage of the great joining offer for the starter kit that is going on right now. So she was one of the lucky ones to um, be able to take advantage of that. <laughs> so, oops, excuse me, there's a hair someplace. Okay, so uh, she's she's thrilled. She got her starter kit and she's um, really excited about that. Um, the joining offer right now, I'll just chat about that for a minute while people are coming on. Um, the joining offer is $99 for $175 worth of product. You can't beat that. It's usually $125, but now it's $175. An extra $50 of stuff. It's a no-brainer. If your your list is $99 or more, consider joining. Okay, there's um, very little quarterly minimum. You can stop whenever you want to. You can just be a hot guest. The number one question that I get from people who are wondering about joining or reluctant to join is, I don't want to have to do videos. You don't have to do videos. You can just be a hobbyist, craft in your own little room, and just um, enjoy the discount. You get a 20% discount when you're a demonstrator, and then it can go up to 25 if you qualify later on. Um, so, yeah, nice to see some more people going on. Cold in Vermont. It's cold here, too. And uh, from Concord, North Carolina. Hi, Deb. Um, so we um, have... 32 degrees here in Catonsville, Maryland, and it is the wind is like 17, 18, 19 mile an hour gusts. Um, and it just sounds like all of a sudden it just whips around and it gets really cold. So it, says it feels like it's 19, so it's pretty cold. I'm staying in most of the day today. <laughs> Maybe run out to the grocery store, make up some hot soup or something, but other than that, I'm staying in. Um, so I know a lot of you had the Arctic blast coming from the west and the south, you had a lot of ice. I hope everybody's safe. Um, yeah, nice to see people from all over. Hi, Sue, from Southern Indiana. All right, nice to see so many people on. I love it. Make sure you leave a comment for those people who are coming on a little late. Leave a comment, say hello, and you'll be entered into my raffle. Um, and um, actually, yeah. So, I, I'm sorry, now you'll be ent entered a time raffle. And speaking of raffles, before we get started on our card, anybody who leaves, um, anybody who makes a purchase with me between now and Super Bowl Sunday is going to be entered into a special promotion that I have, a special offer that I'm doing for Super Bowl. So whether you're a football fan or not, you can still be part of this. So um, I don't know, what team are you rooting for? Do you, anybody have any... Any preference? Uh, do you like the Eagles? Do you like Kansas City? You know, who do you who are you going to root for for Super Bowl? Or are you just into the commercials on the food? That's okay too. Or you'll be in a craft room crafting. Who knows, <laughs> right? Okay, totally not an issue for some people. But put in an order with a host code. I'm going to turn this around. I know that's backwards for you right now, but um, turn that around. I'll turn the camera around. And I'll have that in the in the view, I'll put it in the post. Make an order with me using that host code. If you don't use that host code, you can't be entered into the raffle. All right, so make sure you use it. And anybody who places an order is going to have options to be the mystery host. So that means if we get a lot of orders, the host rewards are going to skyrocket. So just, you know, keep that in mind. That's going to be a good offer. So you have to use that host code so that I can group all those orders together and, um, you will be in that raffle for the mystery hostess, all right? And then also, remember, with every $50, $100, you get celebration rewards. So a um, lot of fun things. I'm going to show one set today. I'm going to be using the Beautifully Happy set from the Celebrations brochure. And it's so quick and easy, and you can do some really pretty cards with it. And even if you're a beginner, 
super, super easy. So I'm going to show you three different options on that. Okay, so getting back to the Super Bowl offer. Um, every time your team scores, okay, you're going to tell me what your favorite score is. Hi, Cheryl. Hi, Judy. Um, when your team scores, then you will be in a raffle for a prize. Every score. All right, so I'm going to be watching. Anytime either team scores, if you're on the Kansas City um, wheel, I'll spin for Kansas City and you can win a prize. And if you're voting for the Eagles, if you're on the Eagles, then I will, um, hi Lois, then I will um, spin a wheel for the Eagles fans and somebody there will win a prize. All right, so it's going to be fun. So like I said, you don't even have to be um, a football fan. You don't even have to be watching. Just stay tuned here and see if you're a winner, okay? All right. Oh, Marsha, Kansas City. All right. Okay, I'm not going to say who yet, but I am going to say we are giant fans. So if you are into football, you might know who giant fans typically don't want to root for. So I'm not going to say anything out loud. Maybe you can figure it out, but we'll, I'll tell you later. Okay. It's just kind of fun. All right. I'm, you know, may the best team win. And as my son-in-law's mother says, may the team with the best score win, right? Okay, it's all in good fun. But the Giants did get farther this year than they have in many years. So we were just happy about that, that they made it to the playoffs at all. All right, and I'm not going to say who they lost to, because that could be a hint as to who we're rooting for for, um, uh, for the Super Bowl. But anyway, both teams are great. We like watching. It's all, all good fun, right? Okay, last week we made these cards with the diagonal flip. And they were a lot of fun, all prompted by one of my downline, Allison. And she did this card. Now, here's my question. Those blue rhinestones on there, I know it's backwards when I flip the, do the self, selfie version of, um, of uh, on my camera, then it's going to be backwards. But that's okay. These little blue rhinestones, where do they come from? I asked on online on Facebook and haven't gotten any answers, except I have no clue. I'm going to tell you today. You take your plain rhinestones and you take a blending pen, okay, stamp and blends, alcohol markers, and you color them in. All right, not on the paper, of course. Color them before you put them over there. Otherwise, you'll get ink on your paper. So I took my Knight of Navy stamp and blends and I just colored right on the clear rhinestones. You can make them any color you want. Isn't that cool? All right, so. Um, Something to think about, any color, just by the clear rhinestones, you can make them any color you like. Okay, nice to see people joining in. Um, so, Colorado, uh, can't, I'm sorry, Ontario, Canada, <laughs> nice to see you coming on, Grace. Um, must be cold up there too, huh? <sighs> I bundle up, everybody. All right, so I, um, these were the other versions of the cards we made. If you haven't seen that video, you can see it here on Facebook or it's on my YouTube channel as well. I upload those videos there to reach people who are not on Facebook. And this is one we made with the um, Delicate Desert Designer Series paper and then um, coordinating stamp sets. I just love this one. It has that Southwest look to it. So pretty. And the um, gold sequins are nice. It's all part of that suite in the new mini catalog. So check that out. Okay, so I'll put those aside, and um, I have something else to show off. I'm so excited. I'm going to tip the camera down just a little bit and back up, and maybe you can see. Look at my shirt. Look, my friend Karen made me a logo shirt. She is a whiz on the Cricut machine, and she said that she, she asked for my, my logo, um, and I sent it to her, and yesterday in the mail came my shirt. So with my logo on it, I just love it. Stamped with the rain, my daisy and all. So um, thank you again, Karen. Just so much fun. So I said I'm going to wear it today and debut that. All right. So um, thanks for joining in again. People who just joined in late, make sure you leave a comment. You can be entered into the raffle um, that I will pull a few minutes after I close the, the live video here today. So um, the purpose of my videos now is not to have a very long video. Some people come on weekly and do an hour, hour and a half long video and tutorials, many cars. 
I just want to do something quick and easy. Maybe meet every Friday. We'll try. Just I'll keep you posted on that. Just watch for announcements. And we'll just do a quick card. Grab your cup of coffee. Grab um, tea, whatever you want. Today, I already had my coffee, so I'm having some water in my logo cup. Okay, customers can get these too, by the way. So check out the website. They come in all the new in colors. Mine is Orchid Oasis. I think there might be only three colors available at the moment. So um, if you're interested, check that out. There is, um, it's great. When it closes, it has rubber seal, rubber gasket on the closure. This slides over to close it and it's spill proof. So I love that aspect of it. When you're crafting, have a covered lid right next to you. If you have a beverage, you don't want it spilling all over your products, right? Okay, so quick card today. I'm going to show you one card, but I'm going to show you how you can step you step it up a little bit if you want to go from a very simple stamping project or your beginner, how we can step it up a little bit and then how we can step it up one more time again. All right, so one more thing before we get started. Let me show you this. This is a blast from the past. And some of my very long-term, I didn't want to say old, <laughs> my long-term stampers from 20 years ago, because it is my 20th anniversary doing this, um, we did this at a stamp camp uh, one year for Valentine's Day. Now, long-time stampers will notice that this was done with when we used to have wheels, stamping wheels. They were on a handle, and I didn't have time to dig it out to show you today, but... Um, there was a rubber stamp on a wheel. It was continuous and it had even a little ink cartridge that you could put inside the wheel and you would flip up the little lid to expose the, that wheel of the ink. You know, it's like a foam wheel in there that has ink on it. You push it forward against the rubber wheel and then you can just continually ink so you don't have to run the, the wheel on your ink pad and then run it across your paper, run out of ink, go back and do it again. It was continuous. So we were able to do these long lines across the 12 by 12 paper. Okay, it was a double line, as you can see. And, um, oh, thank you, happy 20th. Thank you, Ella. Um, long lines across the paper. So you, we could do um, paper for gift wrapping or make our own designer series paper. So that's what we did with those wheels. It was nice and easy. Crisscross this way, stamp some hearts and stamp the little your sweet on there. We made several little treat bags, some cards, and I think I might still have them in there. Okay. Might not be 20 years ago, but it's pretty close. Okay. Certainly longer than 15 years ago. I'll tell you that. So, um, that was a blast from the past. I don't know if some of my, um, I call on my sweet 16, my original people from up in New York. Um, there are about 16 of them. I think there's 17 now, but I still call them my sweet 16. <laughs> okay, so something that you can do, make your own DSP and then cut that up. You can make a variety of projects out of the one sheet. So like a one sheet wonder, they call that. All right, let's get to our card. And then if anybody wants to hang on a little longer, I will show you some of the celebration items that are still are available. And there are some new ones. So if you haven't checked that out yet, just this month, week, some of the things, some of the celebration items have been added and you can get some embossing folders and um, a couple other products that are just kind of fun. So if you haven't checked it out, go back and do that. You have a wheel, Deb? Oh, yep. That one? Okay, cool. I have a lot of them. Unfortunately, I don't have the... Well, you can always use your re-inkers and re-ink your, your cartridges. Um, and they were kind of fun. They were kind of neat. Um, my one friend, Nadine, didn't necessarily like them because she, <laughs> she was worried that she couldn't get them straight. You, know, you had to keep... Um, okay, let's say... Okay, the wheel wasn't this big, but you had to keep it totally flat, like tires on the road. If you leaned it one way, then one side of the rubber wouldn't necessarily hit the paper. And sometimes when you're right-handed, you tend to lean more to the right, or if you're left-handed, more to the outside, to the left. So you had to kind of get the feel of that. Um, and so you kind of got it right. But it was fun. We always had a lot of fun when we got together, those in-person days when before we did all the stuff on the internet. But anyway, so um, we're going to get started. I'm going to flip my camera around. Might be a little jumpy for a minute, but... Um, hang in there. If you need to look away, then feel free to do that. Okay. <laughs> All right. I put the um, measurements for the card in the description on one of my Facebook posts just before 
this I posted it last night so some of you might be crafting along some of you will just look at it later and you'll have it written down there okay I'll try to do that I know that's a lot easier for you so let me flip around here hold on one moment okay I need to take my phone off my mount and flip it around and then head down oh that wasn't too bad yay I'm getting better at this There we go. There's the host code. Okay, jot it down. It's also on my blog. If you go to stampwithlorraine.com, it will be in the sidebar next to the shopping cart. So you can always find the current host code there. It changes usually every month. This one is just for until Super Bowl. All right, including um, yeah, up until the time of Super Bowl. Put in that code and you'll be in there. Um, well, maybe an hour before. I need a little time to get things ready. So um, after that, there will be a new host code for the rest of the month. So please check that out. All right. Now, um, like I said, say hello, leave a comment, be in the raffle, and let's get started on our card. Um, these cards are going to be super easy cards. I'm not going to spend a lot of time. Just a quick hop on, say hello, and I'll keep you posted of current things. All right? So I hope this can become kind of a regular thing. All right. So speaking of Orchid Oasis, one of the new in colors, that's what my cup is. Um, I'll be using, this is one of the in colors from 2022 to 2024. So it came out last year and it'll be in the catalogs until next year. Um, I am using that cardstock, some white cardstock, and I'm using the Orchid Oasis sheets from the 2022 In Color 6x6 Designer Series paper. Now, a lot of people forget about this option. The 6x6 paper comes in both of the sets of In Colors plus all the color families. So, let me show you here. For instance, here's the same paper in the neutrals. Right, the same designs. I believe there are maybe four different designs in there. Um, same designs. There are 40 pages in there. And each color family and each in-color collection is going to have the same pattern. So, they're nice to have just sort of some generic. They change each year. So, um, in the next catalog, you'll have different prints than you have here. Um, and that makes it kind of fun. Okay, so here are the regals. Okay, same prints, just the different color um, combinations. All right, so I'm using the Orchid Oasis paper from that. And I asked you to, I suggested that you have um, a card base that is seven by five and a half so I keep handy as I've told you before I keep handy a little cellophane bag of white I call it a half sheets but it really is cut down um, well it's not cut down it's scored already and made into my card bases so very often I start with this and I like to just pull one out and have that ready to go I do the same thing with what would be my next layer and maybe the layer beyond that. So white, I call them a quarter sheet. They are a little shorter than a quarter sheet because they're cut down at a um, quarter inch on each side. But I keep them handy because they're the, my, my, my most go-to. Right, so I have a card base. Now mine, like I said right now, because I just pulled it out of that sleeve, this is still eight and a half by five and a half. So I'm just going to cut that down an inch and a half. So it really will be seven by five and a half, right? So I didn't want to confuse you. So I'm going to just cut off an inch and a half of that. And that's going to make our front a little short, but we're going to cover it with another layer. Okay. So make sure you burnish your score lines. You want nice sharp edges and then we're going to take two pieces of designer series paper and I suggested that they be different 
Of course, if you really want it, they could be the same. One's going to go in front, one's going to go in the back. So, obviously, the smaller one is, um, is two and a half by five and a quarter. And that's going to go right on there. So, I'll glue that down. I love this little pinstripe pattern. It just happens to be the opposite. The ones I'm using are the opposite sides. But unfortunately, I couldn't use one sheet on here because once I cut off this piece, the remaining size out of the 6x6 six six wasn't big enough to use inside. So I had to cut another sheet for that. But that's okay because I have my scraps right in that packet. I keep the full sheets in the original packet and then I use a clear envelope for my smaller pieces to keep them all together. That way it's easier to find things. I'll just keep them right in there. If I need a small piece, I'll go to that little envelope first. If I can't find what I need, I'll cut down a full size. So let's glue that down on the inside. Now this pinstripe kind of thing would look good for masculine cards. I know many of us struggle for the masculine cards, right? Okay. Alrighty. Okay, so as I'm crafting, between me focusing on my project and the way my mount is for my phone, I can't always see all the comments. Of course, the clamp is right where all those comments are coming up, so I can't see them a lot. Oh, I went off a little bit here. Oh, boy. Okay, we're just going to pretend that didn't happen, okay, because I was not paying attention. So I can't always see the comments now, but I will go back and read every single one of them later on. So please leave leave, um, leave something there. Ask a question if you need to. All right, so now our next part is going to be the white, which is, you need two of these, two and three quarters by four and a quarter, both the same size. One of them is going to be the card front, and it's going to be mounted on your solid colored card stock. Again, Orchid Oasis, keeping this sort of monochromatic here. This is going to be the super easy one, simple, simple. And that's going to get glued on the front flap. Okay, but first let's do the stamping, all right? Just so you have a heads up where we're going with this. All right, let me leave this looking there so that if anybody needs to write it down before they go. All right, so we're going to take... It's beautifully happy. Let me explain what happens here. This is a two-set stamping um, set where you have an outline of your image. And then you also have the second part of the stamping where you're filling in the colors with a different color ink. Um, you can see this is called distinctive because you can see there's a lot of shading right on that rubber stamp itself. So you're not going to have to use your blends to make it look like um, various shades within the flower or the leaves. I mean, look at that. You have some darker and some lighter, and it's supposed to come out like that. It will come out like that. So it's really a neat idea. But right now, I'm just going to show for my simple brush version of the card. You don't even have to use that part. You want to make some really quick cards, just use the outline. And we're going to, like I said, it'll be a monochromatic look. I have my large block here. This is the second to largest block. We have a really big one for the background stamps. And some of the larger blocks, you want to just turn it over, take your ink pad to the stamp itself, rather than going like this and trying to ink it all up. I mean, you can, but I find, hold the thing that's smallest. And then you can go right over it, and then you can also see what's been covered, especially with the photopolymer. I can see where I need to add a little more ink to make sure that line is covered. Now, that's a very fine line on there, which is going to give a really nice look when we stamp it. Okay, so here we go. Just going to stamp it right onto that piece. All right, now with the photopolymer, sometimes you might find, oh, one section of the stamp might not come out as clear as you were hoping to, but you can, um, one thing that Stampin' Up! suggests, and some stamps I have to do it with, is to have a layer of, of some foam underneath. So we do have 
a foam um, mat that we can put, I would put some paper down first and then stamp onto it. It's always nice to have some, some foam underneath there. I found with this one, I really didn't have to because sometimes if it doesn't give way, um, the foam gives you a chance to press that in some more. Okay, so look how pretty that is just on its own. All right, the detail on those flowers is really pretty. The buds, the, the petals, and really nice. So let's just use it as it is for our very beginner um, easy card. I'm going to glue that onto the card stock, which is um, three by four and a half. So it is just quarter inch bigger than what we're putting on top here. And... There we go. And then we can put that in front and just as it is, it's a super simple card. We're gonna add a sentiment in a minute. But first we have to glue this onto the, onto the card front. Now remember, do not put glue over the whole thing because otherwise it will stick to the back. So what we want to do is measure where we want that to be, kind of get an idea. You want to have the equal border all the way around. And then I'm going to Remember that there's about a half inch on top and half inch on the bottom of my card front where I don't want some glue. So this is my trick, what I like to do. You can think about it however you like. I like to say, all right, I know this piece definitely is going to be glued down and I can put glue right to the edge here. I can either mark very lightly on the back how far I need to go or just go beyond that flap give a little mark so that I know not to go past that with my glue and I just make a little oh, it would help if I have some lead out there so I can hold it in place have to find what works best for you guys hold it in place flip it and just say okay I'm going underneath that white okay don't put glue past that And then the other thing I like to do is, I know this, like I said, I know this part has to have all glue on it. And I know this part I want to have glue on, right? But I know not to go all the way up to the top or the bottom, leave about a half an inch. So whatever works for you, you can do both. <laughs> all right, so I'm going to put glue over here. I'm not, I'm staying away from that. I'm gonna put a little bit of glue over here. I'm gonna open it up just in case. I make a little boo-boo. And I'm not going to go all the way to the top. I'm going to leave better, less than half an inch so I know I'm good. Because now I know this side of the card will be held down. I right, close it back up. Make sure I'm in the right direction. And then just center it with the whole card that you see here. Okay. And... How simple that is. Now we need to put something on the inside for writing and that's where the other piece of the white comes in. That's going to go inside there. Now you can center it and it won't be seen but if you want to just make sure you're not going to make a boo-boo and put it off a little bit and it's going to be peeking through you don't want that to happen. Here's my trick. I'll flip this over and I know if I line it up here, it's going to be hidden by that blue cardstock on the front. So I'm lining it up there. I'm going to put glue on the back part. I personally am a fan of the liquid glue because there's a little bit of wiggle room. Now I'm putting it glue up because I don't want to glue it to this flap, I want it to be glued here. But if I line it up here and then close the card, it's going to be in the right spot, right? So just make sure it doesn't move. And I'm just going to gently close the card and then it'll be picked up. All right, ta-da! Then I know when I close it, it's going to be hidden within that card front there. So super nice and easy. Now the sentiments on this one, are very versatile, all the ones that you need. Sending happy thoughts, you can leave it just as it is. Um, you can 
add to it, put something on the inside or another part of the card, sending happy thoughts for a feeling better kind of day or for a happy birthday, um, whatever you like. So, and they're small, which I like because now a lot of those half inch um, strips that I have cut off when I cut down my quarter sheets for the card fronts. I have tons of half inch sheets. They're going to fit right on there. So let's do the Kindness Matters one because I haven't used that one yet. Okay, I'll just pick that up. And when you have a small sentiment like this, all right, well, you know what? This one's going to have to be a little bit bigger than the half inch. Okay, so there we go. I'm going to use this one here. When you have these small sentiments, you can place them anywhere on your card. You have more options. I love the big ones because then you don't need too many other things. Oh, this keeps moving. You don't need too many other things on your card. Your sentiment alone can sometimes be your focal point. So really kind of fun. Make sure you put your little stamps back, guys, because... You don't want it to get lost. I told the story the other day. I was looking for a stamp. Couldn't find it. Couldn't find it. And it happened to have gotten picked up under a piece of paper that I had moved. I was looking all over for it. Could not find it. And I said, I know it's not over in that corner because I didn't bring it over there. But sure enough, there it was because it just got stuck to the back of a paper. Luckily, I did find it. All right, so I'm just going to cut this down. You can use your scissors if you want to cut, um, but if you want to make sure you're really cut straight, use your trimmer. Sometimes I like to cut them on an angle or cut them kind of wonky on purpose. In fact, there's a little fun look. And then you don't have to worry about being too straight either. Then we're just going to put some dimensionals on there. And um, our card is done. I'll show you how to kick it up a notch. Love my take your pick tool. You have a little paddle end and you have a, a sharp pointer end. You can interchange those, it just locks right in. And you have your putty end for picking up small items over there. So if you don't have this tool, you might want to consider that. All right, so here we go. There and there. Pull those off. And we're just gonna stick that right there. Right? You have a quick, simple, monochromatic looking card. Right? So now let's see what we can do to kick it up a notch. I'm going to show you how you can fill in the colors with that two-step stamping technique. Okay. See, I put um, <laughs> some glitter washi tape on there because this cap is clear and it often gets lost. So when I have that glitter tape on there, I can spot it more quickly. Anything to make my life easier. Little tricks. Little tricks. Okay, um, alrighty, so let's see um, what we can do with this. I'm going to color these in with So Saffron. Right, so let me go to my step two card. And of course I did some of the first steps already because you don't need to see me do that again. So I already put down my... DSP, my card stock, the inside piece. I stamped my sentiment and I put the dimensionals on the back already. All right, you've seen me do that. You don't need to see that again. I'm trying to keep a little quick here with you. Uh, you're drinking your coffee. I also stamped the outline to the flowers there. So now I can show you how we're going to do the two step stamping. So I'm going to clean off my original stamp. I've shown this before too. My chamois is so black, but just stained. It still works. I wring it out and wash it out in the sink when I need to. I keep a spray bottle to moisten it again, and it's all good. I cut mine into three different pieces, so I have different sizes. So like you saw, I sometimes just take the smaller one, I just wipe onto a bigger stamp. Or when I'm using my Stamparatus and I need to wipe something, I'll just take the smaller piece and then it makes it easier for me to clean the stamp while it's still on my stamp apparatus. That works for me. 
I'm going to put this one back because I won't need it anymore. And as you know, the photopolymers stick right to the cases. You have those images on the paper underneath, so it's kind of nice that they stick. If you find that they're starting not to be so sticky anymore, make sure you clean them. You can just clean them with water on the back. Sometimes it picks up fibers from your paper or your clothes or dust from your table, and then it's not going to be quite as sticky anymore. Oils from your fingers. So just wipe them with water or take a little... Um, light dish soap and water and you can clean the backs of them and they'll be as good as new they don't come off which is fun all right so this side is the filler side and i'm going to take this stamp here now look this is so so good it fits all four flowers in one stamp so you don't have to do each one take it off a block get the other flower go back and forth so just going to take our so saffron ink it up. I'm hitting it a few more times because I could use a little bit more ink on this one, but that's okay. All right, so you can probably see. Okay, I'm going to hold it against this because it's a little darker. Look at the the different variations in the color. You can even see right on the photopolymer itself. See how the outside is lighter and the inside is darker? So you're going to get that shading right on that stamp. And this one is so, so easy to line up. I've had some that were hard to line up, but I think the between it being photopolymer and the edge of these stamps where the coloring is, is, is a very sharp line and you have a lot of little intricate details on there, so it's easy to line up. Look at that. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. And you see that shading in there, right? Okay, some darker in the middle and lighter on the outside. Now, if my ink was ink pad was a little juicier, you might see that even more. But I kind of like that light look because I love the Orchid Oasis and I want it just a softer look on there. So now let's go on to the leaves. Same story. And all those leaves are on one stamp. Okay, so it's going to go bam, right on there. Nice and quick and easy. And again, you can see the variation in that, right in that stamp itself. Make sure I'm inked up. Go right over there. Love the two step stamping. Oops, a little off the lane. Okay, look, perfect, absolutely perfect. I remember in the past, we've had a lot of trouble. Remember trying to do two-step stamping with the wood blocks, girls? Oh my gosh, I love the idea, but it was so hard to get them straight, especially when you had to put the decals on the stamps yourself and cut them and mount them. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it was just crazy. We've come a long way, right? Thank God. All right. Now the other little buds on the top, they're still green on the outside, so um, it's going to do the buds and the leaves and the little, oh, I should have learned what those are called. What are the little green things that hold the flower petals? Somebody, if you know, type it in for me. <laughs> I know it has a name. My garden club people might know. All right. Now, this, by the way, is um, Pear Pizzazz. Didn't mention that. All right, I'm going to just line it up. And down it goes. I, I, it could not be any more perfect. It was so, so easy. All right, so look how nice that turned out. Just two ink colors. I'm going to clean these off so I don't get anything else dirty. So give me a second. Then put them back. I don't know if anybody else does this, but I like to keep the thin piece of plastic over my stamps. Number one, I think it keeps them a little cleaner and keeps the case a little cleaner. I don't know for sure, but um, but also if some of these are not quite so sticky anymore and I need to um, 
clean them. This kind of holds them in a little bit until I can get to clean them. Just one of my OCD things. All right, so I just keep those little plastics right on there. All right, so now we're gonna put that on there. Look how pretty, such a nice soft look. It's not a complicated card, not a complicated fold or cut. You've seen this before probably plenty of times, but I just wanna show you, maybe you haven't. Um, see what it looks like with different stamps and different DSP. And then we're gonna take our sentiment and put that right on there. This one is a little bit thinner and longer. So sending happy thoughts. Put that right on there like that. Pretty, do you like it? So simple, right? Okay, so that's card number two. We have one and we have two. Now let's kick that up a notch by adding some embellishments. And so again, starting from this part. And then I already did this. Now notice I used a different DSP this time. You have to let me know which one you like the best. I originally chose this one, but then when I looked at my stash, I didn't have enough for three cards. I said, oh, I'm going to have to change it to a different pattern. Oh, shucks. But then I did this one. I said, oh, I really like that one too. Really, really do. So you let me know if you have which favorite uh, DSP you like. I just think they're both so pretty really nice all right so we're going to step this up in a few different ways for the more avid stamper or if you want to make it a little bit more special in some way one thing we're going to do is we're going to take some linen thread it comes on a spool like this and this gives a nice soft sort of a rustic more natural kind of a look to your cards and i'm just going to Wrap that around a couple of times and then tie it in a bow. And I'm leaving a nice long end here for two reasons. One, so that I can tie it more easily. And another reason is I just want that long, I think we'll make it look a little softer. I wanted that sort of more natural look to it. Now, sometimes it's hard to get it exactly, you know, kind of tight. So one thing I do sometimes is I will just take a piece of tape and tape down the back so that it's, it will be tight in front. One second. So you know, it takes up that little bit of slack there. And if you have a lot of slack, then you can always cut it and then pull it together and tape it. So I just like to do that and then it looks nice in, in the front. So you can arrange your, your thread however you want. I just think it has a nice little rustic look with those little frayed ends there. And then I'm going to add my sentiment, which I already did. And this one I did a thank you. So I use the mini dimensionals on the thinner pieces, three of them right across. I'd rather use three smaller ones or cut the big ones in half to support the entire strip. I don't want it sagging. Oops. It, well, you know what? Just dropping that gave me an idea. You don't have to necessarily have it straight. You can always um, put it in a different place, do it on a diagonal someplace whatever you like. Well, my original intent was to put it over here. Um, kind of, my bow is a little bit in the way because of the way I tied it. I make it more of an angle. And I'm going to put it right across that linen thread as if it's going through. Right, so I think it just gives a soft, wispy, wispy feel to that there. All right, and then, you can see I took a piece of scrap paper and stamped um, the bigger flower in there. And now we're going to fussy cut that out. I know that's a bad word for some people. Two words, fussy cut. But this makes it really, really is not that bad. I know there are a lot of little angles here, but I'm going to cut right on the outside of that line. 
when you're fussy cutting, you have to make a decision. Do you want to leave a little white border, same size all around your image, or do you want to cut right on the line or just outside the line? So with this one, because it was up against the white, I wasn't going to leave, I mean, not the white, it's up against this other flower. I couldn't leave any white space. And besides, I do want it right up on that line anyway. So I am cutting just on the outer edge of that line. When you have thicker lined images, it's a little bit easier. Okay, my friends kind of make fun of me <laughs> because I say, leave your scissors still and move your the thing that you're fussy cutting, almost like you're steering a car and driving it along. So cutting that along and then we're going to put this with a dimensional dot on top of the other flower so now my focal point has a little bit more depth as well actually I'm going to use three minis on there and this reminds me too you see that little dot in there I took um, a light pumpkin pie marker and added a little color to to the middle there All right, I don't have to do it there because um, obviously it's going to be covered because when you stamp it it comes out white so but you don't have to keep it white on the stamp set believe it or not there is a little piece a little teeny tiny stamp that you can fill that in with I just found grab my marker and <laughs> that was a lot easier than mounting the stamp and cleaning it and possibly losing it same thing with this little flower there's a little center piece for stamping that and Again, I just found it easier to color it in with a marker. <laughs> All up to you. If you don't have the markers, then certainly stamp it. Okay, so three minis. Let's put them on the back here so that way it's, or maybe even, yeah, three should be fine. Three or four. That way it's not going to sag. I don't like it when it looks lopsided or, or saggy. So I'll just put them sort of in a triangular form. Some people like to use their pick tool to pick these backs off, too. You can kind of stick them and pull them up. Okay, if you have trouble getting your fingers under there, you have to kind of get the hang of putting the pointer under there, but it works. Okay, so let's line this up, see how it goes. Okay, so I see that right here there's a little fold in the petal, so that's what I'm using as my guide which direction it goes. All right, so now that's sticking up a little bit and now let's add just a little bit of um, other embellishments. I didn't want anything too blingy here because it sort of has a country look, you know, natural look with the um, linen thread. So I didn't want rhinestones. I didn't want, I could have put pearls, whatever, but I looked in my stash and I have the classic matte dots. So I thought maybe just some white ones of those would work. Actually, here's one that's already open. I will go with that. Yes, it is open. Where's the opening? There we go. So the classic matte dots come in white, vanilla, gray, and black. You can see I use the black a lot. If you've followed any of my videos, you probably have seen that. Okay, again, putting embellishments on. Good to do things in threes or fives. Odd numbers are good. I'm going to put one big one here. Kind of like that because it coordinates with the dots over there, doesn't it? Kind of nice happening. And then two up here. So it's just enough to show something, but not be overpowering, right? Because there's so many other things on here. You don't want to put too much on there. You want to have something be more the focal point. All right, so that's our stepped up version. One more thing I'm going to do to make it different is I'm going to, instead of gluing this down, I'm going to raise this on dimensionals as well. So back to the regular size, or you can use your strips if you like. I want to make sure I'm going to go on the proper side here. So this is the side I want. Just to give it a little something else. Um, 
I do three or four? Mm, I don't know. Uh, I think three will be fine. Okay, but I am going to make sure I go down the middle. See, I'm noticing that the edge of my card is past the middle. So if I go into the middle, that should be fine. I pull those off. I find when pulling these off, start on the flat side. Some people try to go at the point. Just roll your thumb along the flat end and it comes right off. Easy. Okay, and then on it goes. You can see I already put the inside piece. All right, so that's our stepped up version. That's on dimensionals, that's raised. You have your embellishments, you have the flower raised, you have your linen thread, and I even stamped the inside with a smaller flower there. So depending on what you like to do, what you have time to do, just have fun with it. And you can get this one for free. Let me clear the way a little bit. Free with celebrations, $50 order. There you go. So version one version two and version three. Let me make sure they're all in the camera. Okay, there you go. So um, the stamp is called Beautifully Happy. Okay, Pam. Okay, and thank you, Ella. I'm glad you like those. So easy though, you know, you don't have to think outside the box. It doesn't have to be the most fancy fold. Keep it easy. I love doing the fancy folds and the complicated things. I did something like that recently with my um, Mojo Monday group from New York. We did um, a card that pops up. I'll give you guys a sneak peek. I haven't posted it yet, but I'll give you a sneak peek. It was a gatefold with a little belly band. And then when you open it up inside, the inside pops up. So that's going to be one of my next tutorials. So stay tuned for that. And again, look at that. That's awkward oasis again. <laughs> so I did a few more versions of that. So you'll get to see that in a future video. All right. So I'm going to turn the camera around and um, maybe be able to see any of your questions or talk to you a little bit better. I just love that So Saffron with the Orchid Oasis. Isn't that pretty? And the Pear Pizzazz, the nice light one. Okay. Oh, thanks, Pat. All right. So let me turn this around. If you have any other questions or anything you want to discuss with me I have a couple of minutes and um, if you have any questions about joining let me know please contact me um, I might run a little Q&A for anybody who's interested either a zoom meeting or on Facebook so you can join in on that um, thank you <laughs> thank you Kate um, if you don't have a favorite DSP all right well I don't either I like them both I, I like them so I just love those colors and I'll try to do some in variety of colors too so again take something that you already have and then change it up. Just change the DSP. Keep the same layout. Whatever. That's kind of what my sketch program does for you. Um, if you're not familiar with that, go to my blog, sampathlorraine.com, and um, you can read all about that. Today is the last day to sign up for the February sketch program. It's $34.99, and you get, um, you get four sketches, which means a design, a layout for a card, and then each weekday, five days a week, I post a different card um, sample, a different version of that uh, sketch. I post different versions of that sketch five days a week on Facebook, on a, on a private Facebook group. Um, if you're not on Facebook, I can ma email them to you personally. Um, it's hard to do that with a bunch of people, but I understand some people don't do Facebook. So um, the, um, the sketch... Like I said, $34.99, you get that, and you get four PDF tutorials on those sketches, all right? Um, I will be doing that in February, and I'll be doing it in March. Oh, thank you for sharing, Ella. I appreciate that. Um, so the um, if you want to add on a card kit that makes one of each ske sketch, you can do that for an additional $15. All the details are on my blog, so go over there and, and read about that. The, the paper share is closed. 
I'll be taking that down and um, later on today. But a lot of people ordered that, and that's good. I'll do another one um, a little bit later on. I don't know if I'll do another one at the end of the month, or maybe you just wait till the new catalog comes out, or maybe we'll do some things from. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Uh, so I hope you try these cards. I hope they're they're good. Okay, how do you get that stamp for free? Celebrations is the promotion that Stampin' Up! is doing now. Again, I know it's backwards, but here's a little mini brochure. There are several um, products in here, stamp sets, designer series paper, um, that you can get for free if you qualify with either a $50 order or a $100 order or any combination of. There is no limit. If you have a $150 order, you can get three level one stamp um, celebration gifts, which would be $50, worth $50 each. Or you can do a $100, a level two, and a level one for $50. Or um, bump it up to, if you have a $300 order, you can get three at a $300 gifts or uh, six $50 gifts. It doesn't matter. I had a big order recently, and I received a lot of things. I had to order the paper share products, so I, even as a demonstrator, can get those celebration rewards as well. Um, by the way, ladies, this is my raffle gift for today. So make sure that you have put your um, a comment in the box if you haven't already. Make sure you do that. If you already have this set, I can negotiate and swap it out for something that you don't have. All right. But since I worked with this today and I think you're going to love it, this is my raffle for the day. So um, something to just keep track of. Um, if you have a minute, you want to stay on. I'll show you quickly some of the other celebration sets that you get. One is called Sending Support. has some lovely messages that you don't really see on a lot of the other stamp sets. Um, good luck. It's okay not to feel okay. You've got this. My shoulder is yours. Again, things that show support. So if you know somebody who's going through hard times or um, needs to get well card, needs a little boost, whatever, that's something to do. One that's really popular. I just got this one. I haven't played with it yet. The um, Thanks a Bunch. Now, a lot of people are saying, why do I need carrots? Why would I make a card with carrots? It's awfully cute, for one thing, and it's great for Easter, especially if you pair it with maybe the, the bunny punch and the bunny set. Oh, the Easter bunny set. I just got these two. Can't wait. They're so cute. This punch punches out with that bunny there, or you can just punch it out of a variety of DSP and, and make them look like, I don't know, like little Easter eggs or something going across. Very cute. Um, here's another little, little hint that I've seen people do. Turn these upside down and stamp them in green and they look like a tree. Is that clever? I didn't think of it, but I've seen that before too. Turn this sideways and it's grass. Pretty cool, right? So I can't wait to play with those. Um, and it's nice for spring. It does say it looks like spring. So if you know a gardener, they might like that. Okay, In the country is just a little sketch, which again makes easy cards. Just doing something like this, where you can put those little scenes on a card. They are good for masculine cards that we sometimes struggle with. And or you can use your stamp and blends or watercolor pencils or a little um, blending brush to add a touch of color. Some options there. Adorable owls. Need we say more? They're adorable. They are just so cute. Um, I posted a card when um, I'm on my Facebook post with one of the owl cards on there. So you can check that out. And Scenic Garden is... Um, a nice one that if you like coloring in, you can do that. Or, again, just add little touches of color or leave it plain like we did on that card there. All right, so, so pretty. Love that with the delicate flowers. And uh, speaking of delicate flowers, DSP is another choice that you can get for $50. You get this for free. Um, let me show you my open one. Oops. Really pretty. Um, some delicate flowers, some a little bit bolder, um, pretty, some solid patterns on the back. There are even some that are this one page. Oh, here's some that are just green. And there are some that are in some shapes. 
like ovals and you can use these for borders. Okay, check, <laughs> check this out. Look at that. You can cut this across this way and then you have oval frames to put sentiments or um, a, an image in there. You get six of those and then across here you can use this as a border or a strip on one of your cards. So a lot of options on that where you don't have to do all that stamping. It's already there for you. Okay, there are two sheets of these in, in every pack as well. So that you can get for free. And this is something I didn't think I needed. I said, oh, it's awfully cute, but what am I going to do with that? But I got it for free, and I'm looking at it in person. The farm, oh my gosh, day at the farm, 12 by 12. So cute, coordinates with the stamp set and the mini catalog. I haven't even opened it yet. So like I said, feel free if you want to stay on and, and see. That's fine if you need to go. Quite all right, too. But let me just do this really quickly because I'm so excited to see it in person. All right, so here are the cow, the pig, and the sheep and some little flowers. And here's the back. Oh, the plaid. Oh, I love it. Masculine cards, guys. Masculine cards. Hey, okay, some trees and cows. Love cows. <laughs> and then here's some rolling hills, right? And then here's a white on, um, sort of a sketchy look, the white on the, the maroon background, and there's a linen look on the back of that. But even if you didn't want the farm, these are great for just the backgrounds, for the other side, the flip side. Aren't these colors fun, springy? Okay, little chicks and the windmill. Love that. And then you have this little hive pattern on the background, too. So like I said, even if you're not into the farm, use the packs of these. All right. All right. Move it along. Move it along. Right. Here you have a whole scene. Are you a scrapbooker? Use a whole sheet just like that. Um, making cards. Cut up pieces of it. And, you know, different sections, and you can use those on your cards, too. Put a sentiment on there. Bam. Your card is done. Really quick. Or, you know what? Just put that in a frame. Go to um craft store. Get 12 by 12 frame or cut it down. Put it in your kid's room. Adorable. <laughs> Easy home decor. And then there's the back. Just some uh, white on the bobby blue. Okay. Into vegetables instead of animals. Here you go. You got some vegetables. Nice, right? And then the back is yellow stripe. So I bet you didn't think you needed this one. Now you might. So those are all the patterns on the day at the farm. Oh, and something else. Okay, for a hundred dollars, you can get this big pack. There are forty-eight sheets in there, and um. The colors are Bobby Blue, Calypso Coral, Coastal Cabana, Fresh Freesia, Granny Apple Green, Mango Melody, and Petal Pink. And it is called Dandy Designs. And you have a lot of patterns in there. Caused me to hold it up. I should have shown you this as I had the camera turned. But anyway, just generic patterns, some plaids. Some stripes. Love them. Fun. Okay, they're not flowers. They're not... Uh, some could be masculine or, or kid-like. Somebody the other day was saying, I don't know what to do for my young teenage son. So, you know, um, you could always do something with stars. Or you know, this one here with the dots. All right, so... Um, a lot of patterns on that one. Certainly get your money's worth with all that DSP. And it goes a long way, as you know. Okay, so my a couple quick reminders. Then I'm going to sign off and, and say goodbye. Thank you for watching. Celebration until the end of February. Okay, if you're watching um, February 2023. <laughs> I don't know how long the video will be up. But anyway, so um, end of February 23, end of celebrations. Put in your order. Use the host code that I showed you. I'll put it in the description down below as well. Also go to my blog and you'll see it there. Use the host code this week until Super Bowl and you'll be into the raffle for Mystery Hostess. And also every time 
your team scores. You have to email me what your favorite team is, okay, which team you're rooting for. Okay, whatever your favorite team is, I'll have a wheel for Kansas City. I'll have a wheel for Philly. And um, if Philly scores, I'll spin the Philly wheel and see who wins a small prize. Same thing with Kansas City. Okay, so it'll be fun. It'll be fun. Whether you like football or not, why not just have fun with it? And then at the end, everybody will be grouped together for a mystery hostess. Okay, um, and I am going to say, just, just to be fair, um, unless I don't get a lot of orders, um, I'll, just to be fair, I will um, probably limit the amount of times you can win a, a, a small prize, okay, um, just so other people have a chance, all right, I don't want somebody winning like six prizes or whatever, I'd like to spread it out a little bit, I think you might say that's fair too. All right, so I appreciate you coming on, remember, oh, remember the join offer too? I'll be um, doing a little Q&A, but you can always email me anytime, Lorraine at stampwithlorraine.com. My contact information is on my blog as well. So sign up for my newsletter if you're not already on there. That way you stay informed of all this and you see it all in print. All righty. So thank you so much, everybody, for joining on. And don't forget, if you haven't already, here's your last chance. Leave a comment, say hello, and um, hope you guys have a great weekend too. All righty. So try those cards and put them in the description down below if you've tried the card that we did today. All right. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a great weekend, everyone. Stay warm. All right. If you're watching from my Southern Hemisphere friends, uh, my Australian friends will be watching the replay because it's the middle of the night right now for them. Um, I know they're getting really hot weather right now. So um, anyway, uh, hope you have a great one. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye, everybody.